video will just die. Okay, so tax, tax, finance. I'm a CPA, certified public accountant. I didn't mention that earlier very much, I don't think. I'm also a guitar instructor. No, I'm not, but I, uh, in this, in this little thing I'm doing here, I am hiking across South Clear and Obed and talking about culture, life, things that I want to share with others. And if you like it, you can donate in the little links and join Bitcoin 1776. Okay, let's go on about tax. Oh my God, more of this freaking mountain. This freaking mountain is bizarrely huge. I love huge rock faces. Now, one thing I do know about these mountains, so people think that these mountains like grew like volcanoes out of the earth. That is not true. This whole Tennessee area was underwater at one time and these, these rocks just were plopped. They're just plopped down here. Oof. They're just plopped down here um, and just fell on the seafloor. And then eventually the water went away and these rocks which were under the ocean are obviously one of the highest things upon land today. But they don't erode, whereas the dirt erodes. So that's how these rocks came to form. Okay, so there are a few stages in life. And in one stage, you're getting all the money. And in another stage, you're investing all the money. And in another stage, you're paying tax on all that money. So let's start with a basic tax analysis. Simply to realize how much you pay in tax. In a standard income, you might make 50,000 per year with one child, paying 10% of that in tax, or $5,000. With Social Security and Medicare, oh, this is tricky. Let me go ahead and focus here. <laughs> oh gosh, spider webs. Oh, creepy. Oh, creepy. I dropped my walking stick, I forgot it. Ooh. Oh, that's creepy. Spider webs all over my phone, too. Hmm. Oh, gosh. I have a... This is, this is interesting. Okay, I'm going to read this. With Social Security and Medicare, uh, you and your employer pay another 15% or 7500 into forced savings into government-backed securities for pathetic returns. As you'd spend most of your income, you might pay 5% in sales tax on 20000 for another thousand bucks or pay a state income tax of a thousand dollars plus property tax of another thousand dollars for a grand total of fourteen thousand five hundred dollars or 29 percent in tax. As we just examined, between income tax, social security, medicare, property tax, sales tax, state income taxes, it's easy for the lowest taxpayers to pay 29 percent of income as tax. For single parents making up to a hundred and eighty thousand they'd pay about 10% higher or 40%, which is actually the highest rate of tax. Everyone pays 30%, basically. And earners between 50,000 and 180,000 pay about 40%. Now there is the question of, do rich people pay more? Practically speaking, no. As income taxes increase, social security drops off and sales tax declines as a percent of wealth. So for talking purposes, you can say everyone pays between 30 and 40% in tax on active earned income. However, there are different forms of tax and wealth. Passive investments, rent collection, interest, etc., is taxed at a bit less, as well as long-term capital gains. Long-term capital gains is super important to be aware of because if your only income is long-term capital gains, then up to 50,000, you pay 0% tax. After that, 15%, then 19%, around 250,000, then 24%, if you make 500,000 per year. In common speak, people say zero, 15, and 20%, but there's an additional 4% hidden tax in there for Medicare, et cetera, above 250,000. So everyone pays between 30% to 40% on active income and in infinite amounts, and in infinite amounts of long-term capital gains pays a maximum of 24% but can taxes get even lower? <laughs> okay, so let's go into what is long-term capital gains and some of what I said there while, while I walk and talk. So um, 
long-term capital gains is stock pro stock profits. It's also ooh, it's also real estate profits. It's also um, the sale of business property. That's your main forms of uh, Bitcoin. That's your main forms of long-term capital gains. And so um, that is taxed instead of at the 40% rate, that is taxed at 24% at, at the maximum level, which is also like less percentage wise than any other tax. Now, why is it at this low percent? Uh, well, one reason is that the regular rate of tax is just far too high. 40%, 30% when you count Social Security and Medicare, it's just, ooh, lizard, rock lizard. It's just too much. And this needs to be reduced. There's really no question about this. Um, it's just insane that this has gone on for so long. Now, long-term capital gains, the people who pay this are people who are more mobile. So they are effectively more able to complain. So for a worker who pays 40% in tax, just kind of making ends meet um, between all the taxes that he has to pay, he can't really complain about it. He can't move to a new country. Whereas if most of your income is in long-term capital gains, then you can just take all of your assets and move to a new country if you so wanted. And you wouldn't have to worry about what it, oh gosh, this is Trixie. You wouldn't have to worry mm, about not being able to f afford a flight and you're not really dependent upon the US economy. You can hold stocks in any country in the world and you can figure out a way to buy real estate living anywhere in the world. So that is why, um, that is one of the reasons why long-term capital gains pays less tax. Um, there are other reasons, but that's kind of the primary reason is that effectively they're able to negotiate better than people who work every day and don't have time to deal with tax law and trying to campaign to rewrite tax code in an effective manner. And the effective manner of rewriting the tax code, God, the effective, oh, this is an exceedingly treacherous and possibly not a good idea. I am not positive if this is the correct route. Okay. I think I'm going to turn around. Okay, this is as far as we're going to go. I absolutely cannot get around that. Okay, I'm glad I turned around. Okay. I might have went the wrong way. I was like, I was like maybe this route just goes over these crazy fuck boulders. But this is not it. Unless you're a climber. Which I can climb, but I don't have the tools. I'm not that really good of a climber anyway. Just to be clear. It's not just that I don't have the tools. Okay. I made it off the scariest part of the journey for us today so far. Oh, the scariest part will be getting back. And also if I don't finish before the... So let me go ahead and make this... Okay, so that's long-term capital gains. I wanted to explain that. And the 30 to 40% tax, people will pay you, say you pay 0% or 10% or something. You really pay much closer to 30% if you're in the lowest tax brackets when you factor everything included. Okay. So now the, the question was about paying less. Let's first address the obvious, side hustles and offshore business deals. While these seem far-fetched, it's quite easy today to set business dealings aside, uh, aside offshore, effectively, effectively making it difficult to track in your home country. For example, you sell products in America that pay a UK company of which you are an owner, or at least control the bank account, which then transfers funds to Switzerland for long-term storage then practically speaking, it becomes difficult for the IRS to audit. First, they'd need to secure UK company records, then Swiss personal records, and then cross-check that against a US tax return. For all practical speak, this is not happening. Too costly, too much paperwork, and requiring too much intergovernmental cooperation. 
plus the rich all use this multi-continental exchange system uh, faking invoices from one country to another so there is no significant agreement between those in power to discourage multinational tax authority cooperation and transparency on the small scale however there are side hustles of 20,000 to 40,000 of income in which a tax can be the tax can be quite close to zero as expenses you might have incurred normally can become ex business such as the percent of telephone usage home office some travel auto miles etc this makes small scale side hustles practic uh, particularly pr profitable as the first 20,000 is essentially untaxed but thereafter you are back to paying 30 to 40 percent of profits as tax it's truly insane so with side hustles uh like you might have a telephone bill that you currently pay for anyway but then you can write off half of that as a business expense or you might have a part of your home that obviously you can't just pay rent on the part of the home you use uh you, you can't negotiate your landlord for half rent and just claim you won't use the other rooms but uh if you start a small business then you can deduct some of that on your tax return and then not have to pay tax on that money. Now, for most people, this is only ten to twenty thousand dollars worth of deductions. Um, and then after that, you're back to paying thirty to forty percent. Okay, sweet, we found the right way. Thirty to forty percent in tax. So, um, so yeah, so that's why side hustles and ten ninety nine type income, not W two income, can be more profitable and get a, a little pay raise or whatever. Okay, so I think I explained that. Okay. Another benefit of owning a small business is hiring children and extended family. As mentioned, the first 20,000 is virtually tax-free, but if you have children ages 14 plus, you might get another 10,000 or 20,000 free per child hired on your payroll. For example, in the Joyce Myers Ministries, she caps out at 250,000 but I think she has 20 family members, each making 250,000 as well for a dynastic total of 5 million annually in salaries to the Myers Collective or dynasty. As you approach wealth greater than $2 million, you want to begin thinking dynastically, meaning associating your wealth with that of your family and friends as, collective, as a collective bargaining unit. This is a transitional thought process. So with Joyce Myers, who's uh, like a, a preacher, she will often brag that she gets paid only 250,000 a year, even though she's generating millions and millions of dollars. But her family gets paid like 5 million a year when you factor in all the, because each, each of her family members makes 250,000 and she has a ton of family members working for her. Now, I'm not trying to dog her. This is just a common practice. And it's also important to think dynastically, which is what she does, which is instead of like keeping all the money to herself, she spreads it around to her family peoples. They do work for her, but she spreads it around to her family's peoples. And then like whenever she wants to go on a, a vacation, she's like, hey, all your relatives, why don't you all come along? Or like when the kids need to go to college, instead of like begging her for money, she's like, yo, you have your own money, pay for it yourself. So anyways, that's dynastic wealth, which once you have about 2 million bucks, you want to start thinking dynastic wealth, uh, which just means that's where you're kind of like a semi-socialist within your own family and friend circle, not like with the entire world, because you can't do it that way. But uh, if you got families and friends, the, the ones who are, you know, responsible people, I'm so glad to be back on the trail. So glad to be back on the trail, not scaling that freaking mountain up there is where we just were. And that was scary. Okay. Other commonly known 0% tax strategies are gains from personal residents lived in two plus years up to 500,000. Well, technically this is lifetime in practice. The IRS will lose your records after 10 years and be unable to enforce it practically. And similarly with business real estate, one can roll it over through a series of like kind exchanges which means swapping for new properties of increasing value without recognizing tax. There are many, many more ultra-rich 0% tax strategies, strategies in which I'll suggest uh, a private consultation. If your income is above 250000 per year regularly, 
So I, I'm a CPA, and if your income is above 250,000 per year regularly, then I would suggest a private consultation with me to reduce your tax bill. Um, it will be very profitable for you and me, of course, but it will be very profitable for you uh, to do that. If your income's like 50,000, 100,000, unless you're a small business owner, you might not need a CPA, but it is good to have financial advice, which basically is what I'm doing in this video for, for all those people. But to close out on some common family concepts and questions that apply to people at large, I'll suggest the following. Never do a 529 college savings plans. Those are only for multimillionaires. Always do a Roth IRA when available, as much as affordable. Always consider contributing more to an HSA, if available, that's a health savings account. Generally max out 401k at work up to matching and perhaps more so. So, um, good, okay. You can give kids 15 to 30,000 per year tax-free. Very useful for starting them a Roth IRA early when they have a small job but no savings. For retirement goals, which I'll address more later, a basic objective is 30K by 30, 80K by 40, 200K by 50, and 500,000 by 60. That will get you around a million dollars plus social security at retirement. More than that is saving a bit too much unless you're already, already in a millionaire lifestyle. Meaning once you have hit one of these numbers, focus on thriving as opposed to scrimping. And lastly, at around 200,000 in investments, make it a full-time job. So what I'm saying there is around 200,000, you wanna take your investments incredibly seriously uh, because it's like more important than your job probably once you have 200,000 in investments um, than, a, than a regular job. And your goal for savings is 30,000 by 30, 80 by 40, 200 by 50. So, so what I mean there is if you have 30,000 by 30, you probably never need to save again if you're able to earn like 10% a year on your investments. But like if there's a stock market crash, you lose a lot of money, then you need to save more. But you can use these benchmarks. And once you hit any one of these benchmarks, you might not need to save any more money ever again. So 30 by 30, 80 by 40, 200 by 50, and 500,000 by 60. Um, and that's to have a million dollars at retirement which is good for those who have like $50,000, $100,000 incomes. If you're already like, if you're a doctor making $400,000 and you're spending $400,000 a year on Porsches and vacations and luxury homes, then you might need several million at retirement. So you could just quadruple that or something like that. Okay. In closing, remember progressive tax is largely a sham. Regular people pay 30 to 40%. And if you make 250,000 or more, Per year, you can avoid all tax nearly completely by hiring a CPA like myself, largely in, legally and in good faith, meaning a tax rate that approaches 0% on incomes above 250000 If you find yourself paying more than 50000 a year to the Fed, hire a CPA. Many millionaires and billionaires pay less in yearly tax than a common doctor, so long as they jump through the proper tax legal loopholes. For the rest of us, our objective is to join them. Campaigns that tax the rich are only for show. It'll never happen. Become a millionaire and don't die for phony wars. So uh, the message that I have there is about, um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm getting tired, a little dizzy, covering a lot of subjects today. So uh, most, mo once you have income above 250000 there's just too many easy to achieve loopholes to not have to pay tax on that money if you want to. Um, so even if you have a tax rate of 70%, you can just hide the money quite easily. So, so it really doesn't matter. And when people who say that we're gonna tax things 70%, it's probably never gonna happen in reality. So um, trying to campaign for it and get it to happen, you're kind of just spinning your wheels really. And I remember at a time when I thought like everybody just like, oh yeah, the, the law applied to everyone equally and rich people pay 40% in income tax. And that's just BS. Uh, that's just BS. Doctors do because they get a W-2. But um, if you're a business owner, if you own property, if you're like Elon Musk, he pays, uh, he's, a, he's the like fifth richest person in the world at the time of this, Tesla being $1,800 a share. That guy might pay 
50,000 in tax a, uh, a year, which is like, if you consider that he earned $40 billion this year, but he might only pay 50,000 in tax, that's like a tax rate of like less than 1% of his new wealth accumulation. And then people who have old wealth don't pay any tax on that money. So like Rockefeller, the inheritance of Rockefeller, they might have billions of dollars at their disposal and pay no taxes. So it's kind of a, just a thing that everybody who talks about these extreme tax policies, they're never gonna happen. They're never ever gonna happen. And uh, the, the way that the world is going in the correct way for the world to go is roughly where all taxes cap out at about 25%. That's the, that's the global transition process, is that they're trying to cap all taxes at 25% income, Social Security, Medicare, everything. Just cap it at 25%, and then, um, and then all the loopholes, they'll probably just keep all the loopholes uh, rather than close them. I don't think it's likely at all that they'll ever close the loopholes. There's too much of a campaigning force. And taxes are just absurd. They, they truly are. I'm not trying to be someone who's real negative here, but um, paying for schools is incredibly cheap. Paying for, you know, uh, welfare assistance and all that is super cheap, not very costly. Military budget is true. It's a lot of money. A lot of it's like, a lot of it's like made up numbers. Elon is getting us to the moon on a budget that's maybe... 1% of the budget of NASA. So Elon's doing us a whole ton of good and he didn't cost us any money in tax dollars practically. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, we are making it. This, this is the outcropping, I think. This is such a hike, such a hike. Hopefully the video will keep recording by the time we get there. So yeah, I like, I got, uh, I got into Bernie for a second socialism and all that the idea because i like the idea of everyone helping each other out and people not suffering but that's not what it is the best form of socialism as i mentioned in another video is about artwork sharing good ideas because that doesn't cost you anything and then it just allowing people the equal opportunity not you, you want you want to grow as a society where everyone in that society becomes rich um, so that you're all on the same page as opposed to such a huge rock shelf as opposed to a society where um, there's lots of disparity but but you expect disparity so just you sort of just have to accept it I'll have to be getting back soon but I got plenty of battery and light okay but also that means I'm just gonna kind of read these I got two more to do <laughs> and then and then we'll be good Okay, this is a dead tree that will break if I step on it again. Okay, I might have walked all the way around the motherfucker. And I might be going back to the top. I kind of thought I'd be getting close to the end here. I think this is called the Devil's Shelf or whatever. Um, our picnic table. Okay. And so, so if you like that video, then feel free to donate. Links below, PayPal, Patreon. Bitcoin or join up with Bitcoin1776.org. Thank you very much, Keller Burnett. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about health, wellness, and society. Okay. That's who I am. Okay, just so you know who's talking here if you're just now joining us. Okay, I'm hiking the Obed, um, South Clear. It's kind of an unmarked trail. It's not a federal government property, it's private property beautiful it's awesome and this is where people climb like a motherfucker so oh i am so tired i'm hoping i get to like a nice view spot where i can sit down and eat properly eat and talk finish up here i'm getting tired and the sun is setting i mean two hours it's like seven o'clock now in about an hour and a half the sun will be gone and we've been hiking together about two hours, so. But I'll go back faster than I came because I'll feel more confident and because 
I won't be recording in like, I'll be a little bit scared. So I'll just hike faster. Okay. So let's see if I get to a spot where I can sit, please. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a hike. Such a fun, such a fun adventure. Okay. Okay, health and